This episode is brought to you by Energize Colorado. Energize Colorado is a nonprofit that provides resources and advising to small businesses across the state. Energize Colorado is here to create a more resilient foundation for the state's small business ecosystem. They provide the resources necessary for small businesses to flourish. Low interest loans to energize your small business with Energize Colorado. Learn more at energizecolorado.com. Today on CityCast Denver. Summer's finally here, and so too is the stress of trying to fit in every warm weather activity you dreamed about all winter. So we're going to try to make things a little easier. Over the next three weeks, you'll be hearing our summer entertainment guide, recommendations for what to do in and around the city and how to do them best. Today, we're starting with some personal recs from veteran arts and culture reporter John Moore. He's been covering the local entertainment scene for decades, currently for the Denver Gazette, and he's got the inside scoop on concerts, plays, and all the other shows that'll make this a summer to remember. Plus, stick around until the end of the episode for an interview with our sponsor about air quality issues to watch out for this summer. Also, it's election day today. Don't forget to vote. Today is Tuesday, June 6th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. John Moore, welcome to CityCast Denver. Thanks, Bree. As they, as we used to say, longtime listener, first time caller. Yes. Thanks for joining me, <laughs> first timer. We wanted to have you on because you are somebody that knows the art scene so well here in Denver. I've got like eight pages of notes. We can do like an hour on music. We can do an hour on. <laughs> well, let's just do the. Festivals. Let's try to do the high level. If there's like, is there a one thing out of all of those? You know. The, Theater, arts, events, music, anything. What are you thinking? Personally, I'm just going to say there's a concert on July 9th at Boulder Theater. I'm going to go see Sparks. Oh, fun. Can you tell listeners who may not be familiar with who or what Sparks is? Because they're just, cult. They're, they're a little they're just, bit of a cult. They're a cult band. They're right up our alley, you know? Yeah. Like, they've been around for 50 years. It's just two brothers doing counterculture art before the Talking Heads and before bands like that. And they've always done really interesting things. And they've just released their 26th record. Wow. And um, it's going to be an event more than a concert. So Yeah, I think uh, for casual listeners of Sparks or people that have never heard about them. There's a great documentary out there, but what a fun show to see at the Boulder Theater. The Boulder Theater is beautiful on the inside. I'm thinking about staples that always deliver, like the event that we look forward to in the summer that like never changes and always feels the same in the best way. What is that? What is that event for you, John? Well, for me, my background being in theater, um, uh, to me, the theater equivalent of a night at Red Rocks is the Colorado Shakespeare Festival. Oh. Um, that's theater. Some of it's indoors, but most of it is in the Mary Rapon Outdoor Amphitheater. Thousand seats. You know, Where is it? It's right on the campus at the University of Colorado. Okay. I believe this will be their 65th season. Holy cow. And really exciting uh, this year is that among their four plays, they're going to be doing King Lear with a guest artist uh, playing King Lear, who may be familiar to fans of Angels in America, the play by Tony Kushner, the original Angel. So it's going to be played by a woman. And we'll see one of Shakespeare's iconic tragedies through the perspective of one of the most respected stage actors in the country. So that's going to be exciting. So this is kind of a fresh take, but also an established thing that... Coloradans who have been here for a long time may be familiar yeah. with, but someone who's newer to the city will yeah. be seeing Shakespeare outside for the first time. Absolutely. And if uh, if you think you've seen all the Shakespeare's, then you want to go and see it in a completely different perspective. Her, her name is Ellen McLaughlin. And um, there's just it's just going to be a thrilling way to look at a 400-year-old story is by seeing all of that pathos coming out through the through the body and the and the mind of a, of of Ellen. I could tell you a story about Val Kilmer if you want to hear it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Colorado Shakespeare Festival cast Val Kilmer to play Hamlet one summer. He had already filmed the original Top Gun, but it hadn't been released yet. Oh, so, so like right before he blows up. Right before he blows up. But the movie comes out right as he's performing in Boulder. No. And he did blow up. 
<gasps> and I keep trying to tell people that theater is cool. And people are like, yeah, sure, John. <laughs> and then I tell them the story about how if, you know, if you've been to the Mary Rapon Outdoor Amphitheater, it's right behind Hellum's on the, on the campus. It is like a miniature Red Rocks. And it's self-enclosed. Oh. It's a thousand seats. And a little more intimate. Every seat sold for Hamlet, partially because of Val Kilmer. But this is this has been proven in media reports. I wasn't around at the time. <laughs> but women were climbing the walls during the performance <laughs> to see him to to get over and to to rush the stage. They oh. had to actually hire security to keep fans of Val Kilmer off the stage <laughs> while he was holding his skull <laughs> as Hamlet. What's like the new thing? What's like the freshest, coolest, most interesting thing that you think is is coming through Denver or the surrounding areas this summer that you think is a can't miss? Well, I don't know if it's can't miss, but when you say that, I always think of Erin Barnes. <laughs> we know her as the publicist for Meow Wolf. For Meow Wolf, yeah. There's um, a thing that she's doing this summer called Oddities Alley. It is a summer festival on June 17th and 18th in a little town called Victor. It's a little mining town by Cripple Creek. And it's going to be just, you know, like your typical festival with 150 vendors. Only these vendors are going to be showing taxidermy and museum curiosities and weird antiques and things like that. And I think it's just going to be a blast. I love that. And I, I don't want to undermine Erin and say she's just the publicist for me. <laughs> I think she's been doing things in the creative scene here for a very long time. She's recently written a book about her punk exploits as a as a young yeah. person here in Colorado. But um, Victor also I have been to. Really? It's a really interesting uh, city. At one point, it was poised to be bigger than Denver. It was one of those sort of gold rush towns. But what's really interesting about Victor is if you haven't been there, it's sort of Stuck in time in the best way. Mm. Like you will walk into a storefront and like the electrical outlets are like a hundred years old. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the fixtures, <laughs> the the every almost every building you see along their main street like remains untouched. It kind of almost feels steampunk in a way. So this Oddities Alley event sounds like the perfect thing. <laughs> Absolutely. To go take a day trip to Victor and check it out. And bring home some taxidermy. Yeah. <laughs> bring home some <laughs> Eyeballs in a jar. I don't know. Uh, for sure. But I love that. So, John, I, I know you as one of the co-founders of the Underground Music Showcase. So, I, you know, you and I might be a little biased here. But do you think there is a best music festival or one you want to check out? Or is UMS the one? Well, it's very near and dear to my heart. As you say, it turns 22 this year uh, along South Broadway. Um, shout out to Ricardo Baca for turning it into the explosion of music that it is today. But I love music festivals. There's so many of them going on. You know, um, there's, you know, City Park Jazz is about getting ready to start up. The Five Points Jazz Festival is about to start up. So you mentioned City Park Jazz is a weekly event. I think it's a wonderful introduction to jazz if you're not super familiar with a very wide ranging genre. Absolutely. Um, but it's also like a picnic. You can bring a picnic. You could bring kids. Yeah. You could hang out with your, yeah. you know, your fr I mean, I remember seeing like, I remember going there. That was like a big thing in my 20s. But also I'm thinking about it now as a parent. It's something I could bring my kid to. Yeah. Um, the uh, Jazz Festival too, Five Points great way to also wander around an awesome part of the city. Yeah. So I love those two recommendations. And then, of course, the Underground Music Showcase, which sort of takes over Broadway. The Underground Music Showcase is a great way to get to know Denver music if you're not super familiar. Can, can I throw one other festival your way, oh, though? Sure. Because I don't know that a lot of people know about the Blues and Barbecue Festival no. for Better Housing. And it's um, in Edgewater. And it's my friend, uh, going back to like high school days, Ranger Miller, he went to Holy Family High School. All the money goes to Habitat for Humanity. And Erica Brown is usually on the lineup. I'm not sure who else is going to be there today. Colorado legend. But, but there's this sweet, quaint little park in downtown to, uh, Edgewater. 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 Yeah. Just right off the main drag there. And it just, they take over that park for a day. And it's a quintessential Colorado experience that I don't think a lot of people know about. If you're not familiar with Edgewater, it's literally right on the edge of Sloan's Lake. That's July 15th. Okay. What would you recommend for families, for people like me looking for something to do with our kids? You know, I did, I did a story today about movies. Um, we When we think about summertime movies, we think of <laughs> yeah. Film on the Rocks. And um and I just started doing some digging around. I, you always hear about little films that are being shown in parks. They're usually free. They're kid-friendly. They're usually kid-friendly movies. They um, usually have a live band beforehand. You can have a picnic. And they're everywhere. 
I, I, I made a list and I found like there's 24 different places. Um, there's North Glen, there's Thornton, there's Glendale. Um, there, well, the whole list is on DenverGazette.com right now. Well, we'll, but, link, um, we'll link our listeners to that list so folks can look because I think what's really great about this recommendation is it doesn't matter what part of the city you live in. Yeah. You can find one of these great movie nights and, you know, you can usually bring um, a picnic or they'll have food trucks, music. And if, you know, I, I mean, I have a two year old trying to get them to sit in a movie is like, who are you kidding yeah. me? But this way they can wander around. They, around. they can play in the grass. You can enjoy it, you know, especially if it's a kid's movie. It's something yeah. maybe you've seen a million times. Yeah. That's the perfect thing to go see. But now I know that when I go see movies, it's going to be I'm going to go to Fort Collins. Because oh. there's the Lyric Theater oh, up there. Such a gorgeous theater. And this is not free, but um, but their lineup of movies is a programmer's dream because they're doing they're doing movies that that um, some for, some are for kids, but some are just cool movies to see. Like this, they're going to be doing Lost Boys. They're going to be doing Alien, Wet Hot American Summer. Ooh. They're going to be doing uh, Billy Madison and Moulin Rouge and Office Space and School of Rock and all these movies at everybody at any age. But uh, I found there's eleven film series that are showing <laughs> Top Gun, including Film on the Rocks and, at Red Rock. Which I would have to argue might be the coolest place to see. I mean, Film on the Rocks is a whole production in itself, right, I would right. say. It's a little bit different and it's not as casual as say I'm going to wander over to uh, Central Park and, and see a movie. This is like plan it, pick the night, you know, bring your snacks. You get to see yeah. a comedian, you get to see a band and yeah. you get to hang out at Red Rocks and you get a little bit more space than you usually do for like a concert, mm -hmm. which is what I like about it. Yeah. And it's also speaking of the OMS, it's also a great showcase for local bands because they always pick. Yeah. And for most of the bands, they get picked to, to do the opening set of Film on the Rocks. It's their first time ever playing at Red Rocks. Right. And you want to go early because you want to just see the joy in their faces. You just get to see them. They're like, we're playing Red Rocks. Can right. you believe it? And it's it's, it's a really, it's a special thing because like you said, you know, I think about who else do we get to see locally that plays Red Rocks? Well, at this point, it's like Nathaniel Rateliff, right? Right. But he's, you know, he's done his time. Yeah. He's done the, you and I saw him <laughs> exactly. at the high dive many times. But you want to see your friends that are up and coming have that moment, like yeah. you said. What a perfect way than with a, with a movie pairing. Absolutely. And it's even better if, you'd have, if you've never heard of the band. Yeah. Because you might leave a fan. That's my favorite part. This episode is brought to you by the Regional Air Quality Council. While we sometimes deal with wildfire smoke, did you know that the Front Range's biggest air quality issue is actually invisible? Created from pollutants like car exhaust that react in sunlight, ground level ozone is a leading cause of respiratory problems. If you go out for an evening jog after a beautiful sunny day and feel that tightness in your chest, that could well be ground level ozone. Besides feeling really out of breath, long-term exposure to high levels of ozone is linked to respiratory illnesses. But there is something you can do. Sign up for ground level ozone alerts to be aware of bad air days. To receive air quality alerts on your phone, text Better Air CO to 21000. You can also sign up online for emails at simplestepsbetterair.org. You'll also receive tips on how to improve air quality, so high ozone days happen less often. To stay in the know about bad air quality days and learn more, visit simplestepsbetterair.org. This episode is brought to you by Bad Boy Boards. Based right here in Denver, Bad Boy Boards takes raw hardwood and turns it into world-class cutting boards, charcuterie boards, chess boards, and more. It's a local brand with high quality and great prices, which is great because home chefs like me don't have to settle for anything less than simple elegance in world-class quality hardwood boards and dust covers. They also make gifting customizable and super easy. Oh, and this is super cool. If you stop by Bad Boy Boards, you can watch a live stream of the manufacturing floor so you can actually see your cutting board being made. Seriously, it's so cool. It's like if Willy Wonka made cutting boards. Learn more and order your own individually designed, constructed, and finished board at badboyboards.com. So um, is there something coming up this summer that you think is worth like driving a little further? Um, 
there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in in Denver. A couple, if you don't mind my, I don't know how long we're going here, but if you don't mind mentioning uh, the disability affirmative theater company, Family. Love Family. Um, they've been going through a bit of a transition. They haven't. Perf- they used to perform every summer at the Denver Center, yeah. a big musical like Into the Woods or something like that. Well, they haven't been back there in a while. They're coming back this summer, but they're not doing a musical. They're doing Shakespeare for the first time in their existence. So you're going to see a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream, the most fanciful of all Shakespeare productions, performed entirely by a cast um, with disabilities. And if you've never experienced a family show, do yourself a treat yeah, and go and... Um, go and see them because it will it will it will change your life yeah and I what I love that I think folks don't know who haven't seen a family production before is like they add humor in these funny ways it's a theater company that focuses one on one community here in Denver but they also have their trademark style yeah like their theater yeah. style is just a little yeah. bit different and it's something that I I'm always excited to see what they do with yeah. something classic if you if you like Beauty and the Beast chances are you've seen it at, a, at an area theater company but when you've got a bell who walks with a noticeable gait, sure, and you've got um, a beast who you don't know what his disability is because he's covered in hair, yeah. But the story itself tells you that she is the picture of beauty and perfection, right? And the beast is cursed and and ugly and deformed in some ways. And when they come together at the end, and he's he's still the beast, and Jenna Bainbridge, this Broadway now Broadway actor from Family in Denver. Um, when they dance together, and it's an imperfect dance because they never try to hide their disabilities, yeah. they, in, they incorporate them into their characters. It is the it was the most. I mean, I'm I'm a hardened person, <laughs> and I cried during Beauty and the Beast watching those two dance because because in that sense it talks every, every everything about our perceptions of what uh, disorder, deformity, d- disability, what disability all, means. Of it, all of it means. Denver Fringe Festival is a big deal. That's coming up here just um, Could you this give me a high weekend. level explainer sure. of Fringe? Because I sure. have to say I don't I don't know exactly the sure. kernel of what, what sure. makes it Fringe Festival. Um well first it's it's this weekend, June eighth through the eleventh, so it's going on right as this episode is dropping. But it is a gathering of alternative theater that is boundary pushing theater, it's developing theater, it's weird theater, it's theater that a, a traditional company will never put on their season because sure. it's not necessarily commercially viable. But so many brilliant things emerge from fringe festivals around the country and become main stage kinds of things of that shows. we now know as as something that we would assume or we would yeah. consider a theater staple yeah. maybe started yeah. as a fringe. Right, right. A literally a fringe event. Yeah. And any anything that's outside of a traditional theater, Denver is a hotbed for what we call immersive Right. Outdoor theater adventures. Um, the Catamounts, for example, are doing two immersive shows as we speak at the same time. They're doing one in a park in Westminster um, at the, that's called Pride of the Farm. The Denver Fringe is still relatively new, but it's exploded in popularity. It's got 55 acts coming up just this weekend. And just to give you an example of what Fringe Theater can be like, I just picked out one title, and it's called Camping with Dad. <laughs> and what happens is the audience is invited to sit by a fire ask and learn, decide for themselves how everyone's going to work together to make tomorrow's dads as kind and open-minded, as Aww. dorky as possible, and they serve s'mores. Uh, so if you want a little bit more adventurous theater, you need to yeah. you need to go outside. So to answer your actual question. <laughs> um, yes, what do you want? It? What's worth it. driving for? Driving Getting for out of theater. town. Theater. theater in Colorado, in the summertime, it's all about going to the mountains because we have professional theater companies that are like Brigadoon. They just don't, they just don't exist in the winter. Some of them exist year round, but for the most part, they, they really emerge. take an advantage of the environment yeah, we have here. They they emerge for the summer season. There are theater companies. We have the Rocky Mountain Rep Theater in Grand Lake. Um, that's a professional theater company. I mentioned the Colorado Shakespeare Festival earlier. There's a, a company called the Thingamajig Theater in Pagosa Springs. There's theater. Um, you know, the big one is probably um, Creed Repertory Theater, which is about a, it's a 250-mile drive, but it's still in Colorado. Um, but I mean, it's that's in, a, a long weekend. You could. Well, and the theater is, is as good as anything you'll see in Denver, um, and it's in the most picturesque little corner of, of oh. the state that you could possibly imagine, and it will change you. Um but there's also um, Lake Dillon Theater Company. The oldest theater company in Colorado is actually the Little Theater of the Rockies, which is in Greeley. 
So this is like not amateur hour. This is mm -hmm. the beginnings of someone's career. Absolutely. But the thing that I'm also enjoying about this changing your thought process around going on a trip over the weekend, right? Okay. We go out to go to hot springs or we go for hikes. Why not make a trip out of it and go to the Dillon Theater? I mean, go see it, you know, make a date, make a weekend trip around something that's happening this summer in our theater scene. I wonder if there's something that happens in the summer that is just overrated that you just are like, I've seen it enough. Okay, who do I not mind pissing off? Um <laughs> I do have an appreciation for anybody with the courage to put themselves out there and do all this. But I will admit that I've never really gotten the Renaissance Fair. Fair. Fair enough. I, I think the Ren, right. I think Renfest has a good, solid draw. It does. But it's just not your thing. I'm not going to sink it by not giving it my... Right. <laughs> your seal <laughs> of approval. I have to be honest but, with you. As a fellow person that grew up here, I have never been. See? There you go. I've never been to the stock show. Oh. My entire it's life. It's fun. Yeah. I went recently. It's pretty fun. Yeah. It's a little overwhelming, but <laughs> I want I want the record to show that as a journalist I did not dodge the tough question. You did not. You did <laughs> not. Even though I wanted to badly. <laughs> <laughs> I love your Renaissance Fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your honesty. John, you gave us some great recommendations. Uh, we're going to share a ton uh, in our show notes so okay. um, listeners can find you, find your reporting where you talk about all this, and we'll share some other lists to some of the things that we talked about. But um, this has been so lovely. John Moore, thank you so much. Can I leave you with one last recommendation? Of course. Go to Aspen Grove in Littleton, do some yoga with some goats. And then see a movie. They do goat yoga there? They do goat yoga movies. They're called... <laughs> At the Alamo called, Draft House? It's, oh, it's, it's outdoors. Outside. Yeah, it's it's a yoga studio that's in Aspen Grove, and they call it Goat Flicks. Goat Flicks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that one's just a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> that's our bonus one. Okay. Well, thank you, John. Thank you for having me. <laughs> put links to all the great events John Moore mentioned in our show notes. And you can find more summer entertainment guide picks from our team in our daily newsletter, Hey Denver, which you can subscribe to right now by texting Denver to 66866. But we want to hear from you too. What are you looking forward to doing this summer? Text or leave us a voicemail with your summer entertainment recs at 720-500-5418. The Summer Fun Hotline is open. That number again is 720-500-5418. Hey, it's Paul. I'm a producer on the show, and I am proud to present this short interview with our sponsor today, the Regional Air Quality Council, about what you need to know about ozone this summer. David Sabados, welcome to CityCast Denver. Thanks for having me. So when we last talked about air quality on the show, I think it was about the fact that Denver has fallen out of EPA compliance. Can you remind me exactly what that means? Absolutely. So the EPA sets standards for various air quality issues. And the Denver metro area has been out of compliance for different issues over the years. Currently, the issue that we're trying to tackle is ground level ozone. What is the threat of ground level ozone? Folks may remember, uh, you know, the 80s and 90s where we're all trying to save the ozone layer and had to stop using hairspray, which is hard in the 90s. And we came together collectively and were able to repair the ozone layer. Ground level ozone is different. Ozone up there is fantastic. Ground level ozone is created by the combination of nitrous oxide and volatile organic compounds. A lot of stuff that comes out of your tailpipe of your car, it bakes in the sun and creates ozone. You'll notice it if you go out for an evening jog and it's been a beautiful sunny day and it looks fantastic, but you get that tightness in your chest, that's ground level ozone. Are there other health impacts that we should be aware of? Absolutely. Long-term exposure to high levels of ozone is linked to respiratory illnesses. And we really want to make sure that we're lowering these levels in the next few years. Okay. So I remember when we were talking about air quality a couple of years ago, it was such a big deal because there was this massive plume of wildfire smoke filling the sky above Denver. But that's not what we're talking about, right? No. Um, of course, wildfires are also a problem. They're not a problem we can generally address. Paul, unless you're the one going around setting fires, which if you are, I'd ask <laughs> you please stop um, because that's a problem. That's largely a particulate matter. Ozone is something different. 
So you mentioned car exhaust, David, but what are the other human-caused sources of ozone? The biggest two are the oil and gas industry and then engines that we're operating day to day, cars, lawn and garden equipment. And those two are about equal, actually. There's other sources as well, um, actually paint varnishes, but ultimately it's a lot of fossil fuels. Then if those two are about equal, it sounds like it really would matter if an individual like myself made a difference in my own life. What could I do if I wanted to help out? Definitely. There's a number of things. Next time you're looking at purchasing a car, making that switch to an electric vehicle is one of the biggest things you can be doing. On a day-to-day basis, just limiting the amount that you're driving when you don't need to be. I'm really excited that RTD decided to make transit on trains and buses free for both July and August this year. That's amazing they expanded it. I'm so excited about that. It was an incredibly popular program last year when they did just August, and the legislature provided funding to make it two months this time. Switching, you know, just a couple days a week to taking mass transit, biking, walking, alternative options is huge. The other biggest thing we talk about is lawn and garden, and it's really deceptively a large part of the problem. Unlike your car, your lawnmower doesn't have a catalytic converter. In Denver, your car may not anymore either, but that's a different issue. (laughs) But operating a lawnmower for one hour is the same equivalent as driving a car 300 miles. Operating a gas-powered leaf blower is the equivalent of driving a car 1,100 miles. Well, okay. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, let's say I make a switch, I get an electric mower. This Mm -hmm. kind of individual action can only do so much, though. I mean, industry is the other big chunk. Is the legislature or are other entities in the state taking any action on this this summer? Absolutely. Um, So we work alongside the Air Pollution Control Division and the state health agency to be working on regulation for the oil and gas industry. And, you know, we really think of it as a two-pronged approach. If that side of it is half and the usage side is half, we can be tackling both simultaneously. And if we reduce the demand on fossil fuels, then we're going to reduce the need for oil and gas drilling in our state. Well, David, thank you so much for sharing all this information about air quality. Where can people go if they want even more? Simplestepsbetterair.org. That will show you ideas of meaningful actions you can be taking in your day-to-day life. It'll let you sign up for ozone alerts. David Sabatos, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed the show, why not take a minute to tell Val Kilmer about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CityCast Denver. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye-bye. My favorite part of the podcast is the uh, the, 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 the excerpt at the end. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. That sounded dismissive. That's not my favorite part of the podcast. <laughs> I should say I enjoy that part of the podcast. I, I like that we do it. I like Honestly, that you do it. Honestly, it's fun. <laughs> like, I can't wait till you get to the last five seconds. <laughs> no.